What I love most about this job is discovering new and interesting topics that people like to discuss. Things like 5G and aliens are of course commonplace. But recently I discovered a man that is confident that the solar system has two suns. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Ford Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick word from me about today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available now for free on PC and consoles. Take command of over two and a half thousand tanks, planes, helicopters and ships from over 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armoured cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. Immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics and authentic sound effects place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. You can join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder. What I love most about it though, is there's a game mode for every single type of player. Arcade suits those craving fast paced matches with enhanced vehicle performance and simplified physics. While simulator mode ditches all guardrails for the ultimate challenge. And then realistic mode, the perfect middle ground, strikes a balance between intensity and authenticity. However you choose to play, you'll find it here. And War Thunder features a comprehensive customization system with countless camouflages, historical markings, and decorations for all types of vehicles, including community created ones. Play War Thunder for free on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation now by using the link in the description or the pinned comment. New and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions and seven days of a premium account. It's available for a limited time only though, so be quick. Right, on with today's video, which comes from Richard Vobe's channel. We've had him on before when he was interviewing a chemtrail expert, you may remember. Well, this time he's interviewing a man called Ian Welch, who seems to think, nay, believe, nay, know that the solar system has two suns. This should be good. Here we go. Right. Coming back to the twin sun, when I saw this moving off into the distance, into its new position, in the vision 22 years ago, all kinds of things were happening with the planet, but that's changed and it was going to go tits up basically. Okay, so Ian apparently had a vision 22 years ago about the planet, but it's okay because everything has changed since then. Sure, Ian, fine. Now, let's come forward to today or even three, three years ago. Mm. NASA photographed a huge sphere next to our sun, about 64 times bigger than planet Earth. No, they didn't. This is the photo in question, and it's not a giant sphere. It's an issue with the way the photos were processed. This is a direct quote from NASA. On rare occasions, the Sechi image processor onboard stereo becomes overloaded and produces corrupted images. Generally, these take the form of images from one telescope process as if they were from another telescope. Because the images from the heliospheric imager telescopes are built up from a large number of exposures added together, this sometimes results in double exposures, where data from several telescopes appear in the same image. So as you can see, not a massive sphere, 64 times bigger than Earth. And then, um, I don't know, some years later, the, the NASA also then photographed or videoed plasma being pulled from the sun into this sphere, this huge sphere. Again, no, they didn't. This is the video in question. And whilst it looks quite cool, it's actually just magnetic field lines pushing plasma out the way, making the appearance of a sphere. As the energy builds up, the field lines break and releases a bunch of coronal mass into space. Very easily explained using the physics of the sun, which we are well versed in as a species. So now me, I'm always asking, right, well, what is it? What is this? Mm. Is this is good for humanity? Is this good for Mother Earth or is it bad for us? I got it was very, very positive for Mother Earth. And then I said, well, what is it? What's it doing? I was then shown and told that the sphere was coming to protect Mother Earth and surround Mother Earth during the movement and the process of the birth of the twin sun. Okay, first off, told by who? Secondly, twin. 
usually meaning the same. So a sun that is exactly like the sun that we already have. Seems a bit weird that we can't see this second sun. So the twin sun, as it moved off into its uh, trajectory, its new position, the, the extra magnetic gigantic pull from a new star upon our planet, it would have harmed us. That was my first vision I saw right. two, two years ago. Magnetic pull. I assume he means gravity here. Doubling the mass at the center of the solar system would have a profound effect on the orbits of the planets. This simply did not happen, Ian. But that's now changed because something humanity has done collectively has changed the timeline so that we stay on this planet and that our planet is protected by this sphere. So when you're seeing two suns in the sky at the moment, they're not our suns. Well, we categorically do not see two suns in the sky. This isn't Tatooine. And secondly, what do you mean by our suns? We have one sun, it's not ours. We are sort of more its, if you know what I mean. When you're seeing just one sun in the sky, it's not our sun. And I don't know how many thousands of people around the world have been saying that's not our sun from about three years ago. It was too white. Everything seemed like we we're walking around in a cartoon. It was just. Like I was going to ask you, was this because people have been saying, you know, the sun has changed colour. It used to be orange and now it's very white. Yeah, it's often orangish in colour near the horizon and whitish at its highest point in the sky. Of course, the sun itself is white. It's the Earth's atmosphere that creates those changes in colour. And then when, when they said that, I was like looking up at the sun and I'm myopic and I've only got one eye. And, and actually I can, I can um, look at the sun easier than most people that I know uh, because they, they find the light too intense. But for some reason, uh, whether it's to do with myopicness, um, I can look at the sun and see it. I can tolerate it a bit more without burning anything out. At least that's what I think. Who said that? I don't know. Where have you gone? Um, and it is, to me, it is a lot whiter. I can assure you it's been white for around 4.6 billion years when it first became a main sequence star. So there is definitely something in that. There's, and also the sun has been communicating with uh, uh, like Morse code. I don't know how many videos I've taken. I saw a, a, um, a clip on um, YouTube where somebody was videoing the sun and it was flashing, but it wasn't like doom, doom. It was like doom, 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 doom. So it was like ta ta tapping out a Morse code almost a wow. program. So I thought, well, I'm going to try that. So I videoed the sun. It was doing exactly the same thing. Then it would stop maybe two or three minutes. Then it would start up again. There could be a variety of reasons for that. Atmospheric turbulence or camera artifacts to name two. Now, my, I was being told that these are programs being sent down to planet Earth to help stimulate the movement towards 5D. So the sun is, as you look in the sky, that's not our sun. It's a holographic image, including the moon, including the stars, because we're inside the sphere. Right. So we're inside a sphere which is projecting the stars, the moon and the sun, which, by the way, is also sending us Morse code messages. Gotcha seems totally legitimate. Now the sphere is going to move out of the way and then we will see two suns in the sky forever, for the rest of our lives, for millions of years. It's a natural part of evolution for a solar system, one star, one sun, to become a binary system, two suns or two stars, a natural process. That is utter hogwash. Binary systems usually form together at the same time from the same molecular cloud. And there are no such molecular clouds in our solar system right now. And even if there was, there are way too many gravity wells for star formation to occur. But because we've been uh, infiltrated by the dark side, the reptilian race for 20,000 to maybe 100,000 years. Okay, so we finally got there. We have finally scoured enough content on YouTube that we found someone who actually believes the world is run by reptiles. Amazing. We've been dumbed down and we've been uh, uh, messed around with a long, long, long time, removed from the natural harmonics of the universe. So we are now uh, back towards that process of coming back into harmony with the universe and that will come in align with the twin suns. Do you think Ian actually believes this? Like, honestly, I think he does, doesn't he? Dear, oh dear. Now with that in mind, 
one sun, seven chakras. So we look at one sun, you split that with a prism, it goes into seven colors, seven colors of the rainbow. That's coming from that pure white light from one star. So logic states, if we've got two stars, then we should have 14 chakras. We do. And I checked this and discovered this about nine, 10 years ago. No, 10 years ago. Ah, you checked that nonsense meant more nonsense. Got it. And I discovered that we've got what I call 5D intercostal chakras. And these are basically in between our chakras that run down the center of the body. So we have an extra seven chakras linking with the new star, the new sun. And this has to be that way, otherwise we couldn't function. We wouldn't be able to survive if we did not have the chakras matching the light frequency from a new star, then we wouldn't be able to function in this binary system. Well, we've got on all right so far, haven't we? And actually our species did pretty good for the 300,000 years or so before chakras were conceived as a thing. And it's not just us, it's all plant life, fish life, water, trees, you name it. Every single species life form on this planet is upgrading to 5D. And this is coming forwards with the twin sun. What even is 5D, by the way? Doesn't sound that safe, does it? The dark side know this, and that's why they're through fear mongering. They're trying to uh, dis dis distort this, this evolution that we're going through. So when we as human, as human race follow a particular pattern or a story on the internet or anywhere on mainstream media, then we follow that and that dumbs down the species, it dumbs down the light, and we cannot then move forwards. Well, that's ironic, isn't it? That he's saying these specific words on this video. Because I believe it's people like you, Ian, that are not dumbing down our species, but negating our ability to improve. If nobody got on their mythological, metaphysical, metaphorical high horse like you, Ian, we would all be much happier and more informed. That's what I think anyway. Mm. So what I teach, and it's always positive, so if you go onto my Telegram channel, masses of free knowledge and information constantly. It's all positive, trying to uplift and upgrade humanity. And this is where we need to be. I'm going to do some magic here today on your show to help that coming forwards. Magic? Oh, I like magic. Let's skip to that bit. So let's um, let's go back to these twin suns. You said you were going to do um, uh, something. and uh... Yes, I'm going to do some magic for everybody. And, and this is a gift from me. If you go onto YouTube and just type in um, uh, the healing master, Ian Welch, mm. I, I actually give free healing. Right, and that's been going for about 10 or 11 years. It's had about 28,000 views now. And the, the testimonials and feedback is extraordinary. So what I want to do now is a similar sort of thing. But I want to help people that are watching this to come up to 5D. I'm a oh, wow. Get ready, everyone. We are about to ascend into 5D. Let's do this. I'm already feeling this. Right. I'm all, my whole body is, is changing as we do this. So I'm going to have my hands facing the, the camera like this. So what I want everybody to do now is focus on my voice, focus on the screen. I want you to now take three good, long, deep breaths. Same with you, Richard. Take good, three, good, long, three deep breaths, please. Okay. Relax each time you exhale. Relax and let go. I want you to state now, everybody watching this, in your mind, I choose now for my four bodies to come into harmony. Nope, that is not good. I think we will end the video there. Very, very weird. Not the sort of magic trick I was looking for, Ian. Well, there we go. What do we all think of Ian's twin sun theory there and his magic trick at the end? Let me know in the comments below as always, but for now, we're all done and dusted for another Tinfoil Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching today's video. It truly is appreciated. Now, listen, if you enjoyed it, please do subscribe to the channel. We're on the march to 600K. When we get there, we're doing a special sunrise to sunset live stream, which I'll tell you more about soon. And of course, if you really, really enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button 
Button 2. Just enough time for another word from me about today's sponsor, War Thunder. Just enough time to once again thank War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Play War Thunder for free on PC, PlayStation and Xbox by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment. New and returning players that haven't played in six months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions and seven days of a premium account. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great few days and I'll see you on Friday for the return of Level Earth Observer. What's he up to now? You'll have to wait till then. See you then. <laughs>